All right. We are live. We are back in Bible study. Amen. <laughs> Very short, brief intermission. Here we go. Can y'all hear me all right on both sides? Amen. <laughs> Perfect. Amen. Couple seconds. <clears throat> and we'll make sure you guys write it off. All is well. This is bringing your day to a close. Thank you for your sacrifice of time and service. We'll be picking back up um, with the law of sacrifice on tonight. Everybody okay? <laughs> yes, doing good. Amen. Amen. It's seven oh four. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna ask that um Prophetess Tam if you would open us up in prayer this evening. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prophet Sam, you could open us up in prayer. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. <laughs> We thank you, O oh God, for this day, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to assemble here on today, O oh God. Now, God, open up our minds, our heart, our, our hearts, O oh God, to receive, O oh God, the word that you have, that you have placed in your apostle's belly to release unto your people, O oh God. We glorify you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for every nugget, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for every scripture that is about to be read and broken down, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. God, to allow us to sit at the table, oh God, and eat, oh God, of your word, oh God, as we take it piece by piece, spoon by spoon, fork by fork, cut up in little pieces as we have to, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We glorify you, oh God. We magnify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Um, Minister Carly, do you have the mission and vision statement? You're on mute. Um, okay. Can y'all hear me better now? We can. Okay, man. Okay. One second. It's freezing up on my end. One second. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So the. <laughs> Statement for Trailblazing in the Name of Ministry, starting with the mission statement, is here at Trailblazing in the International Ministry, we are empowering people by the power of spirit in the word of God to think it, believe it, speak it, and be it. And our vision statement is we strive to bring all of the knowledge to the knowledge of God in biblical truth and teaching the sound doctrine of the gospel of Jesus, who is the Christ, making ready prepared disciples. To go throughout the nation, we understand that our testimonies are manifestations of proof of the power of God that works through the believer. And the text scripture is Philippians 1, 12 through 14. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much. And good evening again, everybody. Good evening, those that are logging on. 
to a uh, good evening, Apostle. Um, good evening, everybody, for logging in, joining us for our midweek Thursday night impartation Bible study as we are continuing in the series of uh, law and order. Um, we are on the second law. This is part two of the second law, which is the law of sacrifice. We spend a little time diving into the law of honor, and now we are in the law of sacrifice. Um, there are seven particular laws that the Lord did give me. There were seven laws uh, that the Lord gave, gave me. Now, there are many laws that he has, but for my assignment is to present to you all and to expound on these particular seven laws that the Lord has said to me that I will cause a total alignment. And that is the law of honor, the law of sacrifice, the law of worship, the law of the seed, the law of harvest, the law of uh, position, and the law of dominion. Those seven are the ones that we will spend time in in this particular series of law and order um, that I'll expound to you. So let's go ahead and get started. Since we did miss last week, let me just take a Brief moment to thank everybody, thank, thank the team. Thank you all so much for your sacrifice of service, um, for jumping in and, and, and putting your hands to the plow. It was a huge success. It was a beautiful time. And to all the honorees, we, 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 we congratulate you again. We thank God for your service, for your work, for your years and, and hours of labor and sacrifice that, that you give of yourself to, um, to the Lord, for the Lord, to the body of the people. And so we just want to honor you all once again for those who are received the awards to our Apostle uh, Robbie C. Peters, to Apostle Kenesia Mouton, Apostle Michelle Foster, to Overseer Joy Smith, to Pastor Franchetta Mays, to Prophetess Tanisha Scott, uh, who else was there? Uh, Pastor Terrence Hall, to Evangelist Pat Catrice, um, to Minister Cameron Shotlow, to Elder Donnie Nelson Jr. I don't think I missed anybody. To all those that we see, I think that was everybody. Glory to God, I went by memory. <laughs> Amen. So to, to all y'all, uh, once again, we just, we honor you all. Thank you for your service. And I pray that you will continue to, and, and I hope that encourage you to continue on with the push to continue to do the work and not give up. You are greatly appreciated and loved. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me do a, a quick little uh, recap on, on this law of sacrifice. All the laws are important. Of course, I, I, do, I do a lot of um, drilling down in on the law of honor um, as I have, because I believe that is one, all the laws, what the Lord called law is important, but the law of, of, of honor is so relevant and is so imperative that we understand that because it is the seed to access but the law of sacrifice, the law of sacrifice is also important because uh, without sacrifice, it, it is the seed to the move of God, is the seed to dwelling in his presence. Amen. And so whenever there is something given of oneself, which is a sacrifice, something you think is sacrificial, it moves the heart of God. It, it, it allows his hands to move and he comes to see it, gets his attention. And so we have to understand that whenever there is um, a great move in your life. Whenever there's a, a shift to a new dispensation, uh, whenever there's any type of transition, there there's a sacrifice that is required whenever one is wanting a change. Uh, so, so sacrifice is also a seed of change. Sacrifice is the seed of transition. And whenever you understand this law and you operate in this law, whenever there is a sacrifice given, there's a transition because it is a transactional uh, movement. It's a transactional movement. I'm giving something to receive something. Although the intention should not always be just to receive, but I'm giving of myself that it's something sacrificial, something that may be difficult, that will not, it's not, it's not going to be easy or else it would not be a sacrifice. Amen. Or not, it would not be a sacrifice. The law of sacrifice provides an opportunity for us to prove to the Lord that we love him more than anything. It, it, it proves God. It, it, it shows that we're trustworthy. It shows that we trust him. It shows that we trust him. It shows that we that we honor his integrity, his word. It, oh, it shows that we believe that he is an integrity God. Glory to God. The law of sacrifice is also twofold. When we talked about the last time we were together, as for testing and drawing, it allows us to learn something about ourselves, what we are willing to offer to the Lord through our obedience. 
sacrifice also temper us for obedience. Hallelujah. It tempers us for obedience. It, is, it brings us to a place of uncomfortability. It will move you and shift you out of complacency and mundane thinking is what sacrifice does. This is just a recap. Um, so we talked about being uncomfortable. We talked about uh, sacrificing ourselves, which is found in Romans 12 and 1. Uh, many of us have quote this, we read this, we've learned it, maybe even preached it at some point in time that it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice yourself? Hallelujah. Are you willing to sacrifice sleep? Are you willing to sacrifice work? Are you willing to sacrifice some things that you hold near and dear to you um, in, in order to receive some things or to show the Lord um, um, that I am willing to give this up? A sacrifice is a lifestyle found in 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in the manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Sacrifice is a lifestyle. It means that I ought to guard myself and not act out or respond or react how I may, how the flesh wants to just feel. I'm not, I'm not going to say what I want to say. I'm going to sacrifice and put my flesh under subjection and be mindful of what I say. That's even That's a sacrifice within itself, because why? It's a lifestyle. I can I can put some things down and say you know what I'm not going to I'm not going to react uh, uh the way I want to. I'm not going to say what I want to. I'm not going to use gestures of my body <laughs> like I want to. Amen. Uh, uh but I'm I'm going to sacrifice that why because I'm living a, a a lifestyle of sacrifice. Sacrifice of our own will according to Luke 22 and 42 saying, "Father, if thou willing, remember as Joshua was in the garden of Gethsemane, and he said, he even prayed himself, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Matthew 26 and 39 also uh, went a little further when he fell on his face and prayed, my father, if it be possible. You know, uh, another another interpretation from another one, another writer um, in another gospel says, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, many times we'll be faced with things, but that is a place of sacrifice. It is a humbling experience. And when you operate in our law, said, can I, are you willing to sacrifice your own will? Because we have free will. Am I, am I saying I'm going to sacrifice even watch this because we have, the Lord has a permissible will and he has a perfect will. Some of us, we like being in the permissible will of God because we, we want to stay and ride and skate along in life on, on grace. But what about that perfect will? What about indulging when you tap over into Jeremiah 18, when he says, that, come on, will you go back to the potter's house and get in the center of a will and let him do you over? I'm not, I don't want to just get by with God, but will I, will I, will I, will I sacrifice some, even that and go a little bit further, go deeper in the things of the Lord and say, look, I want to be in your perfect will. Nevertheless, Look, I don't want to go through this circ circumstance. I don't want to have to go through this season that I know it's about to be dry. I don't want to go through this season where I have to lose everything. I don't want to have to go through this season where I'm going to be stretched to the capacity beyond what I even thought. I don't want to have to go through this season to where I have to learn. I don't want to have to go through this season where God is sending me back to school or sending me to this particular area of career because I really don't want to do that anymore. I want to do this, but the Lord said, I'm sending you here because this is what or who I called you to be. Will you sacrifice your lifestyle and your own will? Hallelujah. Sacrifice is beyond a seed of sowing financially. You have to understand this lifestyle. It's your will. It's giving up of yourself. But the law says that there is an exchange. And every time there was a sacrifice in, written in the Bible, which is our pattern, which is the portal which shows us the, 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 the cycles and the seasons of those that God had personified himself to say, this is what you ought to mimic after. Whenever there was a sacrifice unto the Lord, he came to see about it. And there was a mighty move of God. There was a mighty move of God. Uh, so I, we named some. Uh, over in Genesis 3.21, when the Lord even sacrificed and, and, and gave, uh, there was a sacrifice made for Adam and Eve. 
of a coat as skinny had to clothe them. So a sacrifice had to be made. Why? Because for, for their sin, for their fall, they had to be covered. Hallelujah. So the Lord makes sacrifices for us. Hallelujah. Um, there was a sacrifice that was not, there was two, uh, another example of one that was received and one that was not. So we have to be mindful. That's why I said, we have to make sure, Lord, is this what you desire? Not just, it's not, if it's, if it's, if it's just out of your flesh, uh, it has to be something that God is, is requiring or he's what he's asking for, or else it's not a true sacrifice. Cain and Abel. Cain gave God a sacrifice that God did refuse, but Abel had the sacrifice that God accepted. And sometimes we just want to throw God something because we think that's what He wants. We give Him a we give Him a halfway praise. We give Him we give Him halfway worship. We give Him halfway prayer. Uh, we give Him just a piece of our time to try to rush through. Some of us go into prayer just so God can hear us, but don't really don't want to hear what He got to say back. We don't spend enough time with Him. Come on, somebody. And so that is not is that truly sacrificial? We give we give God chump change and tip God. Come on, but we tithe to waitresses and servers at the restaurant. Amen. So we 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 tip God in worship. We tip God in praise and expect and have the audacity to expect them to move. But if it's not a true sacrifice, that's the law of sacrifices. It's going to be something that's going to be difficult. It's going to be something that's not going to be that easy. But the law says there's an exchange. God comes sees. And we're going to get into this in a minute. I'm excited about, about where we're going to go with this. Hallelujah. On tonight. Uh, there was a sacrifice that Abraham uh, gave unto the Lord when he built an altar and gave a sacrifice. The Lord came. And when the Lord came to see about this sacrifice, when he birthed it on the altar, watch this, there was promises that was made. There was an exchange. Abraham gave a sacrifice. He shifted and moved. And because of that, God came and watch this, gave him a blessing. He said, I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. Your descendants shall have and see this. There will be legacy that will come out of your loins. Come on. There will be legacy. And a lot of times your sacrifice creates the room for legacy to come behind you. And you may not always see it. You may not always, you may not always see it, but your sacrifice will make room for those coming behind you and you will leave an inheritance of legacy. Amen. And sometimes, and that's another, that's another, uh, that's another portal or means of sacrifice because sometimes we want, we think what we may sacrifice is just for us. It cannot be selfish. It has to be selfless as well, because a lot of times, and those are on here that may be a parent, that are that is a parent, you make sacrifices that's not for you. You sacrifice for your children, for those that are coming, for, for your seed and your seed seed. And it's the same thing. You want to sacrifice. Why? Good evening, man of God. Thank you for joining us. The sacrifice are for those that come behind you as well. Abraham made a sacrifice. And because of that, generations, the Lord said this will happen forever. That the generations after him was able to receive land and things and provisions that God had. Amen. Glory to God. Um, and then we talked about Philippians 2, 17 through 18. It says, yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering, and on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all for the same reason as you also be glad and rejoice with me. Here we talked about how Paul mentions his willingness to be poured out as a drink offering, as a sacrifice. Are you willing to give what you have? Are you going to hoard the word? Are you going to hoard the, the things that God gives you, the outpour, the impartation, the wisdom, the knowledge, the, the understanding, um, the intellect, the wit? the gifts, the talents. Are you willing to pour, be poured out like a drink offering? I don't know about you, but I told God, I want to go back home. When it's time for me to go home to glory, I want to go home empty. I want to pour and give out everything that I have because I don't want to be found like the man with the hidden talent. We have to understand why that was so, because he, what happened was he wasn't, he wasn't operating in a law of sacrifice. He hoarded what God gave. And, and this is why I'm going to pause right here, because when you think about that text with the man with the hidden talent found over the book of Matthew, it, what happened was he said that he gave one, five, one, three, one, one, or one, 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 two, one, one, one. And, and the five multiplied, the two multiplied, but the one hid it within himself. And if you go back to Genesis, the Bible says that we were created by what? The dust of the ground. That means he hid him, his talent within himself.
And so many times we don't want to sacrifice what God gives. We want to hold on to it like it belonged to us instead of sacrificing it. And that's not operating. And even I call it the Philippians 2, uh, 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 drink, a pour it out like a drink offering. Are you willing to pour yourself out like a drink offering? That's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of sacrifice. And sometimes the Lord may call you into a place where it may seem like everybody's not going to receive you. You may go into a crowd or a group of people or into a place where there's a lot of people, but only sit there for one or two. But are you still willing to pour yourself out like a drink offering? The law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, and just tap dancing a little bit more on Romans 12 and 1. Um, again, to be holy and acceptable, which means to be sacred. It's something sacred. Anything that is sacred, it is holy. God is going to come and see. I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, sacred, which is acceptable unto the Lord. So know when it's a sacrifice, that means that there's going to be some times and some things you're going to have to lay yourself down because it is acceptable by the Lord. Uh-huh. Those times when you were in the grocery store, somebody clipped the back of your heel uh, with that cart and you want to you wanna say something. Somebody cutting you off on 45. <laughs> you want to say something. Can you, can you, can you maintain your flesh and sacrifice what you wanted to say? Turn around and smell. God bless you, man, woman of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Watch this. Romans 8 and 13. It's going to bless you real good. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, <laughs> you will die. But if you but by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. All right. So that should help you out real good. Whenever you want to say something that you shouldn't say and you want to, to remember to sacrifice your own words and your lips or what you thought, can you sacrifice the things that are upon your heart and go ahead and put build an altar upon your heart so that the Lord will come see about that and help you deal with those inner issues so that you're presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Amen. Remember so Romans 8 and 13, beloved. So if you if you live according to the flesh, then you you will die. But if by the spirit, then you put to death the deeds of the body. Glory to God. I just want to give that to you for free. So you keep you in remembrance of the word of the Lord. Amen. First Peter, first Peter 1, 15 through 16 says, but as he who called you his holy, you also put, be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. That is presenting your body. That is making sure that your uh, this law of sacrifice it looks, uh, is a lifestyle. It is how you live. It's how you think. It's how you move. And every day, the more that you die to yourself, you operate in the things of the Lord so that, good evening, everyone, so that um, you're, you're getting into this place um, to where if I abide and operate and follow the law, this is law and order. How can I align myself to where I'm acceptable? How can I align myself so that I'm pleasing unto the Father? How can I align myself? Because these are law, these are principles that God said, if you abide by these, this is this is this is this is learning his statutes, learning his ordinances, learning his statutes. What did God say? This is these are the laws that many don't want to talk about. The Lord is saying to us, when you understand the law of sacrifice. There's an exchange. If you wanted, if it, this, this is the seed. So, so those are just logging in. Sac, the loss, the sacrifice is the seed of transition and change. If I really want a true change in my life, if I want a transition, then I need to understand the law of sacrifice. And when I operate under this law, there will be told true transition and change in my life because I'm giving up something to in order to receive something. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Second Samuel twenty four and twenty four. Second Samuel twenty four and twenty four. Um, in this story, David has sinned. Watch this. So this going to help some of us out. This fallen. Um, David has sinned against the Lord, and he told, and, he, and he's told to go to the threshing floor. 
over in 2 Samuel 24, he was told to go to the threshing floor of a man by the name of Arana and build an offering there and sacrifice there. And then this man, Aru, or Arua, excuse me, tells David just to take whatever he needs for free of cost. He said, go ahead and just take whatever. He's heard about David. He has a reputation. I hope y'all hearing this. He, he has a reputation. Y'all go over there to 2 Samuel 24 and 24. It, 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 he says, go ahead, ha have whatever you need. Go, go and do whatever you need. But, but David was in distraught because he sinned against the father. And watch what happens. Then the king said to, uh, the king said, uh, David said to Aru Aruna, no, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. I'm going to have to pay something. Watch this because I understand that I'm in error. Watch this. Those that we understand, we want to come to the altar and we want to just fall out and have deliverance. And when we get up, we, we cry, pick our lashes off the altar and, and put and straighten our wig. Then we think everything is all right. But we want to take, listen, there has to be a sacrifice. Watch what King David does. Now, this is the one that God said, this is a man after my own heart. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for, the, for 50 shekels of silver. David wanted his sacrifice to be acceptable to the Lord. And he knew that if it cost him nothing, that it would not be acceptable. And if it cost him nothing, it would not be a sacrifice. A sacrifice means it's going to cost something, beloved. It, it said that David had sinned against the father and he understood this. He said, let me go and, 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 and give a sacrifice, an official offering to the father. He said, I need to go somewhere. And it, the, the, the other king said, look, look, you can have this. He said, no, I got to pay for it. There has to be a cost because therefore it wouldn't be a sacrifice if it came for free. Many of us want stuff for free in our life. We want to enter into the heart, people's heart. We want this, but we're not willing to pay a price for anything. And that's where we got it twisted and wrong. There's going to be a cost in, a, in order for it to be considered a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some blood, sweat, and tears sometimes. It's going to cost you some extra nights of prayer. It's going to cost you some rest. It's going to cost you some comfort. It's going to cost you, watch it, something. Or else it's not a sacrifice. And if I really want to get into the place, watch this, if I really want to get into the presence of God, if I really want transition in my heart, if I really want my heart cleansed, if I really want my hands to be clean, if I really want the forgiveness, if I really want to seek the face of God, I'm going to have to be willing to pay a price of something. Because a sacrifice requires a sacrifice requires uh, me to give up something. A, a sacrifice means that it's not going to be easy. It's not, it's not what I give off the top. I'm giving from something I don't think that I have. Notice I said think. Because sometimes we have it. We just It's something I got to let go that's hard for me to let go. Amen. Glory to God. He said, I'm going to buy this threshing floor and I'm going to buy the ox. I don't want you to give me nothing for free because I have to make sure I feel this pinch. I have to make sure that it's going to cost me something. I have to be willing to pay for it. A sacrifice is something you're going to be willing to pay for. It. Many times we make sacrifices that cost us nothing. And sometimes in a form of money, sometimes it's a form of time. Sometimes it's a form of service. Sometimes it's some of our possessions, our things. But it has to cost you something for it to be considered and received as a sacrifice. Amen. Oh, Jesus. So I want to let's go over to. Uh, turn with me over to the book of Kings. That's first Kings to be exact. Chapter number 17. And let's let's get this lesson here. Amen. I don't believe I might be good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. Let's pick up, let's go to second uh first Kings, excuse me. First Kings chapter 17. And I'm going to read just a little bit um, because I want us to see this story. I want us to go into this time so we can hear what the Lord is saying about sacrifice. Because as we can see on both sides. Hallelujah. Um, as those who are on leadership 
who are in leadership and those who are on the receiving side of being covered. Amen. Um, um, uh, uh, in this in this law of sacrifice and how God views that and how obedience wraps itself into that and how this law plays out. Amen. Go with me to first uh, first first Kings second uh, seventeen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And I'm just going to read just a little bit to about verse number seven, I believe. And it says, um, and, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitant, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to I uh, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that shall uh, that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. I just want y'all to hear that because a lot of times we don't really follow the instructions of the of the Lord and we still expect him to move and, and things like that. Sacrifice also requires obedience, which means you have to have an ear to hear the word of God and move with that. Because sacrifice also means sometimes you're going to have to go to places that you're not comfortable in that and go places that you don't understand. But God told you to go. He sent you there. He told you to do it. You don't understand. You may not even like the assignment, but the sacrifice is not my will, but thy will be done. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen, somebody. So for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the even, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the that that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Did he not prophesy that there will be no rain in the land? Hallelujah. I want to go ahead and read down a little bit because this is part of this is part of this text. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Watch this. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Watch what he says. And Elijah said to her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring unto me and after make it for thee, thy son. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jump down to verse 16. And the and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he has spoken by Elijah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice. He said, do not fear. Verse uh, 13. Verse 13. He said, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. Hallelujah. Elijah is in the, he's in a place called Cherith. He's in a place called Cherith. And I want you to understand how uh, profound this is. Cherith means in Hebrew, uh, it comes from a root word that means to cut off or cut down. Um, the name also signifies to engrave or to carve, a cutting, separation, gorge, to uh, to torrent or a, a winter stream. It was a remote place where God hides him, leads him, and feeds him. 
Uh, see, sometimes as we're going through some things and as we're going through transitions, as he had just prophesied, many of us have been used by the Lord for those who've been walking with God and or, or, or God, you know, you, you try and you're seeking the things after him. You're on this path, you're on this journey with the Lord and you just, you know, and God will send you to a place. This place was, uh, it, it meant, it signifies to engrave or to carve. And he was, it was there in this place. It said that he was in Cherith. He was in Cherith and, and, and he caused him to sit by a brook where he sent ravens to feed him. And this took a sacrifice in trusting God. And as we're walking with the Lord, the law of sacrifice is when you believe in me and you sacrifice what you may think, that you allow me, watch this, it's not about trusting what I can supply, but it's trusting me as your Abba Father. It's trusting me as Jehovah Mikadesh. It's trusting me as Elohim. It's trusting me as Adonai, the master, the one who will make a way. I sent ravens to to feed you when there was nothing there. When I allowed you and used your mouth to prophesy my word and dry up a place, but I called you to a place of brook that will give you the provision for the season that you're in. Why? Because out of the sacrifice of obedience that you're moving into the place where I sent you to go, the Lord said, I'm going to make a way for you. So it's not about you trusting the supply of what God gives, but trusting him, the one who gives, who is a supplier. Glory to God. The law of, the law of sacrifice, y'all need to understand this. Cherith means a place. It signifies engraving and carving and cutting away. Why? Because Ed, before I get you to your next, there's some things I'm still working out of you. There's some things that I'm working in you. I got to carve away some stuff because as, especially those, the prophets that are in the room and those that are on the live and those that God is utilizing, you say, I'm going to cut away some stuff. And as I send you to a place called the brook and send some things that you look, a raven was considered and is still considered a dirty bird. Come on, somebody. And God will send you the unlikely resources to get you into your now season in order for you to make it to your next. But you got to understand the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice says that I'm laying myself down, my own thoughts, because my thoughts are not the thoughts of God. My ways are not the ways of God. But when I trust in him and I walk according to faith and not by what I see, you cannot be moved by what you see, beloved, in this season. Then watch this, he was going to send me to a place. He said that he was in Cherith. He was in a place to signify cutting away. He was in a place to signify I'm still molding you and I'm contouring you and I'm creating you and I'm still working in you and I'm leading out the water. Why? Because you said I'm going to operate in Jeremiah 18 and I'm going to go down to the potter's house and get my butt on this wheel and God, whatever is in me or on me that's not like you, I'm going to allow you to put your hands on me and get out the mars and the lumps and the leaven and everything that's not like you make me over God because I believe and I trust and why I'm in this place oh God that you're cutting away and molding me before I get to my next you're going to send an unlikely source and still provide for me provision <laughs> he sits about a brook he said he was in chariot and it signified cut off or cut down cut me down God let me get out of myself let me present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Lord God, tell me what I need to, to know. Show me what I need to see. Take me where I need to go. Let me just completely bow down. And I trust in you. And I'm not worshiping you for the stuff, but I'm worshiping you as the God, the one who is the Elohim, the creator. Uh-huh. And knowing that you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Hallelujah. The law of sacrifice is sent him. He was in a place. It also means separation. That means it's a part of your walk. The consecration sacrifice means when I'm when I'm being set apart. And God is sending me to a new place. There's going to set me apart. There's going to some stuff I got to, I have to be alone. He, he was by himself for a moment. And the Lord sends an un unlikely source to make sure he was fed. Make sure that he had the provision that he needed in this place. And until it was time, watch what it say, until the brook dried up, until it was time to move. And God will show you when it's time to move. And the law of sacrifice says, um, look, this is an exchange. He said, when the Lord said go, did it not say? Just as the Lord said, so he went. That means he was in tune with the frequency of God. So as, as God shifts and moves and he speaks, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. What is he saying? 
Where does he tell you to go? Where does he tell you to sit? He said, I want to make sure you're going to be all right. I want to feed you. You're not going to go hungry. Hallelujah. And it was fed by an unlikely source. Oh, my God. Here, here's this man who trusts God and obeys God, and, and God is providing for him. There's a brook, and Elijah is able to drink from it. And when he did, he must have said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I thank you, Father, because you just dried up a place and you used me to say it. The Lord ever used you to prophesy a word and you when it happens, you're like, oh Lord, did you, the Lord just you, I said that. But yet he makes a way for you when everybody else seems like every the chaos is all around you, but you sitting in peace. There was no rain, but he was drinking. Come on, he wasn't thirsty. Why? Because he he trusted God, he obeyed the Lord. The law of sacrifice. I got to, that means that I can't, I can't go by my own. I can't lean to my own understanding. I can't be led by my own heart because he still had to go through a season. Watch this of being separated, cut down and cut away. It said he was in charity. So after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. According to 17, uh, 1 Kings 17 to 7, which we just read. God used a brook to sustain Elijah. Because of his obedience, watch this, and, and operating a law of sacrifice, it bought, watch this, the transition, it bought change, but it still brought provision as well. It bought, I was able to sustain, I was able to be sustained. Sacrifice means that I'm going to obey God. And because of that, I will be sustained even in a season of famine. Even in a season of famine. And now the means of God had used to provide for his servant had dried up. And, and, and some of us are in that exact position. Some of us are in a place where he said, Lord, you was given. And now it seems like I'm in this dry place. I'm in this dry season. I'm in this dry spell. What does this mean? What does this mean? Why it seems like I had a, a steady money flow. I had a stream of income and all of a sudden it seemed like I hit this wall. All of a sudden I it see it seems like out of nowhere my accounts in red for the how did this happen? Where why did the stream dry up? The law of sacrifice. I, I, I have to continue to trust God. Sacrifice is that even when I when I'm getting I feel nervous when my knees are knocking and I may not understand. I'm still going to trust God. And lean in a little harder, lean in a little deeper. My God, my Lord. Sometimes we forget even what the Lord has had us to release. And, and we feel like we're not going to have to go through anything. But somebody says it's time for some time. It means that it's time to move on. Because what happens is if we we get into it, we can we can get into a place of complacency and being comfortable because God gave us provision in a short season just to sustain you and we'll plateau because we feel like we've reached a place of success. Well, y'all is, is dried up over here, but I'm drinking out of a stream. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to dry that up too, because I don't want you to stay here. You're getting too comfortable. You allowed your, you allowed a temporary place that I allowed you for rest to become the place where you want to plateau and get too comfortable with me. You made that your mountaintop, but was only supposed to be a place of rest. Uh, it reminds me of the people that was fighting for Gideon <laughs> when they went down to the brook and they began to, the, those that lapped like a dog, those that bent over, those that bent over had to go home. Why? Because they bowed down to a place of success. And those that lapped water like a dog said, Yo, you can use them because they understand that this ain't the point of destination. This is not the purpose. They, we still have to keep moving. We still have to keep moving. So sometimes when, when it begins to drive, that means it's time to move on. It's time to move on. The word of the Lord came to him and says, arise, watch this, and go to Zarephath. Go to Zarephath. Watch this. Zarephath means a place of refinement. Zarephath means a place of re refinement. It's a smelting place, a place of purification with fire. <laughs> 
So first I had to get some cutting away done that I had to get separated. Watch this. He still gave me provision in that place to let me know God is still with me. He's not leaving me. He's not forsaking me. He's using me. But then I had to move and go to a place called Zarephath. And some of us are in a place called Zarephath. Some of us are in a season of refinement. I need you to understand how this correlates with the law of sacrifice. When you operate and follow the law of sacrifice, it means it's going to take you from one place of being cutting or cut away of being separated. God is dealing with you. And then he says, now I'm going to refine you. Why? I can refine you more because I cut the fat away. I cut some of the old man. I cut some of the old skin. I cut some of the old mindset. I cut some of the old ways, the whole way you talk, the whole way you thought, the whole way, the old way that you moved. And now I'm bringing you to a place to be refined. He said, I'm sending you to a place of Zarephath. Come on, prophets. I'm, I'm sending you to the place where your prophetic word is about to get sharp. I'm about to send you to a place where your ear is about to be real keen. Come on, seers. I'm sending you to a place where you're, where you're seeing your eyesight is going to get discernment. It's going to get so keen and sharp. I'm sending you to a place where you're going to learn to study harder to show yourself approved unto God and rightly divide the word of truth. I'm sending you to a season where your prayer life is being refined. My God. He said, go to Zarephath. Arise. In other words, straighten up your posture. Huh? Uh, because I need I need you to shift your posture. I need you to shift on how you're sitting. Shift, shift on how you're standing. Shift your posture. Arise. Get up and then go to a place of refinement. Go to a place to be purified with fire. A place that also represents extracting of precious metals by heat. My God, today. That's what Zarephath means. Which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to feed you, my Lord. God has more than one way of supplying what you need. And when one means of supply dries up, God will provide another. So just what happened, and watch this, what happened in last season is not necessarily how God is going to move in this season. But watch this, I'm learning how to operate and follow the law of sacrifice. I'm still going to have to sacrifice on how questions because I got to sacrifice even how I thought. How God moved and how we how we chucked and drive and shouted last season is not how you're going to shift and move this season. How you did stuff and how maybe you worship last season is not how you're going to worship in this season. How the hour that you prayed in last season is not going to be the hour that you pray in this season. The watch that you had last season is not going to be the watch that you have in this season. The way you studied and work in, in last season, it's not going to be the way you studied and work in this season. I'm talking about secular and spiritual. Some of you, the career that you had last season is not what you're going to do this season. It's going, to, it's going to mean an elevation of education. But are you willing to go to Seraphim? Are you going to sacrifice your understanding and get up and move? My God, today, are you willing to go from being separate? Because some of us get comfortable even in consecration. I like being by myself because I don't want to deal with folks. I really don't like people. But God said, I'm going to send you around a whole lot of people because I'm tempering you to be able to minister and share your testimony. I'm sending you to a place called Zarephath. I'm sending you to refine you. Watch this. When a, when, when a, when a goldsmith or a silversmith, they stand over the silver and gold. You know why? the silversmith, the Lord stands over the silver and gold because they know that the heat has to get so hot and it's only ready when the silversmith or the goldsmith can see his reflection in it. God said, I'm sending you to Zarephath. So when I put you in the fire, because it's a place of this, watch this, you operate under the law of sacrifice. You said, oh, Lord, I'm going to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I want to put you in the fire and you're not coming out until I can see me. Until I can see me is when you can come out this fire. Until I can see me is when, I, when you can get up off this altar. Until I can see me, until when you go through I ride now I-45 and you don't think about cussing the people and flipping them off the bird, I'm going to keep you in a fire. You're going to sit there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Zarephath means refining. Oh, Jesus. He said, get up, change your position, arise and go to Zarephath. 
Arise and go to the place where I'm going to refine you, a place of smelting, a place of purification. I'm about to see you in a fire. My God. He said, but I got somebody here that's going to be waiting for you. What you're going to meet somebody and their provision, what they have is going to feed you. The, because the brook dried up, the ravens all flew away, but I'm going to send you somewhere else. And you're going to have to walk in obedience. Watch this. And even those that I'm sending you to is going to be a test for them also. Let's keep on going. This is good to me, y'all. I'm excited. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. He gives us a way that supplies all of our needs. Huh? Some of us are on jobs like my even my own self and my, my own secular career. That it, it, You become comfortable receiving that check every week or every two weeks and all that stuff. But what happens when God says that I, I, I'm going to supply a different means? And you used to get this check, but what happens when that starts to dry up a little bit? And God said, trust me. You got to trust me. You got to trust me. My God, today, you got to trust me. What happens when God calls you to leave Cherith and go to Zarephath? Well, he will provide for you another way. What happens when you use some money coming in this way and things coming to you that way and things are right easy? He said, no, there's going to be another way because you got too complacent from last season. It's going to come from somewhere different. Don't get fixated, God said, on the means of his supply. We, he said, I want you to be fixated on trusting who I am and how I move. Understand, he said, because many of you have questioned my integrity and God don't like that. He don't like when you question his integrity because he's an integritous God. He will provide because he never changes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Clinging on to, to, to Cherith when God calls you to Zarephath is the surest way to miss God's blessing. We try to hold on to a cherith. We want to hold on for the, to the last season. We want to hold on how he provided last time. And we, it's like we just waiting there. I know the brook dried up, but he was feeding me here. So I'm going to wait here and make sure to see if it's going to start coming back in the stream. Mommy, money cometh now in Jesus' name. He said, no, I dried that up. You ain't coming this way. Money cometh now. Abracadabra. Move, God, because I know you did this last time. God said, I'm not moving how I moved last season. I don't know who this is for. I'm not moving how I moved last season. I'm calling you from Cherith to go to Zarephath because you need to be refined. I got to put you in the fire. I'm trying to purify you, my God, today. God said to Elijah, the brook that was such a blessing to you in the past is not what I have for you now. I'm drying it up. But there's a blessing and ministry for you in a place where you least expect it. I'm sending you to somewhere where you don't even understand. You don't know where I'm about to send you. Because there was something I did for you in Cherith. But now I got to exercise it. See, we like when the Lord gives us prophecy word and he calls us this. He calls it, come on, those that just been ordained. God called you anointed. But what happens when he sets you in a place and now exercise what I've anointed you for? Exercise what I've given you the position in. It's time to exercise that works of ministry. Where are the works of the that belongs with the title? What's the works that belongs with the position? I got to send you. Don't get comfortable there. He said, I'm not, I'm not going to do the same thing. It's not going to come the same way. I'm sending you to a new place. This is all about the law of sacrifice. I promise. Watch this. Write this down. It's simple. I have to walk in faith and obedience. I have to walk in faith and obedience. The law of sacrifice requires me to walk in faith and obedience. 2 Kings 17 and 10 says, or 1 Kings, I'm sorry. So Elijah arose and went to Zarephath. So he got up and he went. And when he came to the gate of the city, oh my God. When he got to the gate, to the very entrance of this place, behold, there was a widow. She, she was there gathering up sticks. Gathering up sticks. Obedience was the pattern of Elijah's life. So we have to understand. Modus operandi. Remember I said the, the, the pattern, the pathway that God has already set. We follow the patterns of those that God already personified itself in before us. Modus operandi. That means there's a pattern, there's a pathway that came up against it. That's a Greek word for pattern or pathway. 
There's a pattern in Elijah's life. And when he arrived in this place for refining and, 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 and uh, 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 purification, there was a woman in desperate poverty gathering up sticks on a dump outside the city. And Elijah asked her for a drink. And as the woman returns to go and get the water, he says, and bring me, go ahead. Matter of fact, while you're there, bring me some bread. Bring me some, bring me some of that cornbread. <laughs> bring me some of that cornbread too. And the woman says, as the Lord your God lives, she knows who the Lord is, but she is not a believer. At this point in the story, the Lord is Elijah's God and not hers. And as the Lord your God lives, she said, I have nothing baked. Only a handful of flour in the jar and a little oil in the jug. There she was outside of the city, uh, 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 at, the, at the gate of the city, getting six to try to make a fire. And she planned to bake some bread with the full expectation that what this would be her last meal with her son. And watch what happens. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Watch this. Yeah, would you think this was going to happen? Go ahead and do what you said. But first, but first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. Elijah was the prophet. That means that he spoke the word of God. Many of us are walking in the season. And God is tempering us and we're understanding and, and operating or, or re rekindling, re recalibrating, refreshing ourselves and our walk with the laws of the Lord. And what the prophet says was, uh, was the word of God and what he's began to speak. Watch as he spoke life. Notice God also gives her a great promise. Watch what he said. He says, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. The jar of flour shall not be spent. It will not go empty. And the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. Now, here's the thing. Some of us might say it sounds, you know, like, you know, we can miss that promise. We can miss that because sometimes we're seeking a supply um, out of the Lord and miss the, the promise, the great promise, what, what, what he said. Some of us, when we're going through, if we put yourself in a position and a posture of the widow, we want to say, look, if you a prophet, prophesy to me uh, 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 some quail and some, you know, some chicken, you know, a little bit of greens, you know, a little bit of yam, macaroni and cheese would be nice, a little Kool-Aid, you know, prophesied to me, I'm hungry. I, I said, we're about to make our last meal and all I got is a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil. And, and so I can just go on and let me eat my last meal. I'm on death row here. And, and so we can just go on and eat it and then just die. You telling me to bake some cake, but you're telling me, look, he says, sure as the Lord lives, that this jar of flour will not be sent or the oil will not run empty. He just prophesied that what you have in your possession will not run out. Because if you operate, watch this, this was a sacrifice for her. All I got is this oil and flour to make this enough bread for me and my son to die. And you telling me to make it for you. But he said, listen, <laughs> for thus saith the Lord, the jar of oil and flour that you have is not going to run empty until it rains. That means that there, that means it can it can water the ground and there's going to be harvest to come after that. But sometimes we can get so caught up in in, in what our our circumstances and what I'm looking at that I can miss the promise of God. And Elijah, had he not moved to go to the place of refining, watch this. This was refining his prophetic gift. Then let me prophesy some life into this woman, and she didn't even really she she knew of God. But watch this, it pushed her into a place of faith. It put, because why? Because obedience and she sacrificed. This is how the law of sacrifice worked. Because watch this, did she not do what the prophet said? And because she sacrificed what she had, God sent a prophet to prophesy to her, you will not run out. You will have continual provision. 
my God, today. Because you operate, this is the law of sacrifice. I told you it's going to come together. When you operate and follow the law of sacrifice, when I give what I think I don't have, it will cause me to have and continue to pour. It will cause me to have an abundance of something to come from something out somewhere I didn't even think that I had. The little that I have, God will make it much. Watch this. And I won't even understand it. I'm just going to pour. I'm just going to pour. I'm just going to pour. And I'm just going to pour. And it will never run empty. Why? Because I operated in the law of sacrifice. This is a promise that God says. When you sacrifice, this is, the, watch this. Sacrifice is the seed of transition and change. She ain't know God, she know him now. You ain't believe God, you believe him now. Because wait a minute, all I had was enough to make this one cake for me and him to share. I don't make this profit and I'm eating and it never runs dry. My God, glory to God. This is the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifices, there's a serious transition going on. Ooh, I don't know about y'all, but that's exciting to me. That's exciting to me. God will provide what you need when you need it. Not an overflowing jar and an overflowing jug, but he will continue to make sure it still pours. It never runs dry. He said, watch this. While, 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 I'm, dealing with the, while I'm dealing with the family, because there was some other issues that you don't even know about somewhere else in another place. There's some stuff he had just left Ahab. Watch this. And he had the prophet's idea. Look, God about to draw all this stuff up. Because whenever the Lord has to deal with the mass, it does not negate us from having to feel the consequence of it. But God will make a way to those who are obedient and watch it operate under his law. And the law of sacrifice says, when I give out of what I think I don't have, when I give out of what I say, Lord, I don't even, I don't really have it. It's, it, it's hard for me. This is a hard place. I don't understand it. It don't feel good. I feel like I'm about to die. Watch this. We all, to, we all on our way to death. We just don't know when. We're not a carton of milk. We don't have an expiration date. But if I can operate in obedience, watch this. She said, I'm about to die. I guess Elijah probably said, me too. I just don't know, I just don't know when yet. <laughs> me too. But when I operate under sac the law of sacrifice, look what it did for her. It gave her a means of a bottomless jar. Because all she had, she, I got enough to just feed me and my son. That's it. But she obeyed and she sacrificed what she had to feed the prophet of God. And because of God, God washes. He had a word in his belly for her. And she stood at the gate of the city. What was known to be the dump. She was in the lowest place of her life. And sometimes we feel like we're in the lowest place of our life, y'all. Look, all I got is this. I'm done. I'm ready to throw in the towel. I can't do it anymore. God, I, I you know, I, I don't know what her circumstance was prior to it. I don't know what bought it for, what, what, you know, how she made it to that point, that, that place. And sometimes we all go through different circumstances and situations where we feel like, Lord, I'm about to tap out. I'm tired. And here comes a word of the Lord for refreshing. It said, if you sacrifice this, if you just sacrifice this time, if you just sacrifice this seed, sometimes they say, look, the Lord is, you'll tap onto somebody's life and say, sow a seed of $25. I, I got $27. And God will, I've been there. Let me tell you this story. This is years ago. I was still living in Cleveland, Ohio. And this is time I was still in the health industry. I was on my way to work. I worked night shift. And I remember I had, I had $6 in my, in my, in my, this back when gas was real affordable, y'all. This was back in, I think it was, I can't remember, like maybe uh, 2000, maybe 2001, something like somewhere around there. And um, I, I, I was on my way to work and I had to stop by the gas station. This is a true story. And um, I went to the gas station and I had $6 in my purse. That's all I had to me. And so I was going to put that in my gas tank so I could make it to work. <laughs> And I remember this man, he came up behind me and um, he said, ma'am, I don't mean to scare you. I don't mean to scare you. He said, but I'm I'm so hungry. My stomach touching my back. I never forget it. He said, I'm so hungry. My stomach's touching my back. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I just got out of jail. I just got out of jail. And he pulled his paper and he said, all they give you is, he said, they gave me this, this check. They gave me this paperwork and they gave me my stuff. He said, but I don't have nobody to call. 
I don't know how I could cash this check. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry, man. My stomach touching my. If you could please just buy me a sandwich, some chips, some something. That I'll pump your gas. I'll do anything. Right? Lord said, give him the five, keep the one. I'm like, I don't know. You know, in my head, I'm like, oh my God. And um, and I heard it again. Give him the five, you keep the one. I promise y'all. I gave him that five. I said, go in there and buy you a sandwich. Now, I stayed, I stayed, I don't know if anybody on here from Cleveland, but I stayed in this place like between Kinsman and Union. It's like the hood. You know, you could got the hood sandwiches and everything. And um, I said, go in there and get you a sandwich. And God bless you. He said, I probably said, don't worry about it. He said, man, I'm so, I said, I said, don't worry about it. God bless you. He said, he said, God bless you. I thank you. I made it to work. And I end up getting gas. <laughs> and, you know, God bless me. And he, and he multiplied what I had. And allowed me to have my tank to be full supernaturally. I'm, this is a true story. I'm, I promise you. And 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 I didn't it, I didn't even know what I know now, but I trusted hearing God, and I know I heard His voice say, "Give Him the five, you keep the one." God will give you provisions when you operate in sacrifice and obedience. The law of sacrifice says it, watch this, it is the seed of change and transition. And I believe that it not only transitioned my life, but it gave that man hope. It gave someone else hope. Remember, we talked about Abraham, the he's operating the law of sacrifice. And not only did Abraham get blessed, but his descendants were blessed because he was. We're part of the descendant, we're part of that heir. So we have to understand how this law of sacrifice works. When God said, This is my law. That means that he stands on it. And there's something in the kingdom courts that says, um, this, this is sealed. This is sealed. The law of sacrifice said, watch this, because she sacrificed and gave what she had, God made sure that she never ran out. She had the oil and the flour to continuously eat. She was ready to die. See, so this is my last piece of bread, my last meal. I'm out here, I'm out here by the dumps trying to find some sick delight of fire so I could bake what I got. And because she operated in a law of sacrifice, God honored that. And it caused a total transition and change in her life, her and her sons. And it was still a place of refinement for the prophet Elijah. It was a place of purification for the prophet Elijah. So the Lord used him and contoured him and also blessed her. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all talk to me. How we doing, Facebook? Jesus, the Lord is so kind and so good. Watch this. Mark 8 and 34. We're going to wrap this up in just a minute. If anyone co would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Lord was not just talking to the disciples. He was not just talking to the Peter, James, and Johns. He said, if anybody, if you're a woman at the, at the gate, ready to die with a few sticks, said, I, 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 I'm tapping out on life. The Lord said, if you, are, if you would just come after me and deny yourself and operate a law of sacrifice, follow me, my God, today. And taking it a little further, in the next verse, in the 35 says, for whoever, somebody just tap on the screen and say, whoever, for whoever, whoever means me, would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. She said, I ain't got nothing to lose. Let me, let me just go on and, and, and obey. Let me go ahead and sacrifice and bless this man of God, this prophet. And sometimes that means was that was she she was operating a law of sacrifice. That means that she she gave up what she had. She 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 came against her own thoughts and her own understanding and said, "Let me just go ahead and sacrifice this." And watch this because of that she gained her life. Because of that she gained more provision. Hallelujah. To every kind of want and distress, insult, persecution. Um, anything that we can face, he said, whatever, for the sake of the Lord, 
he has given and made room and made provisions. Hallelujah. For everything that we sacrifice and go through for him, the Lord makes a way and gives provision for us. That's sacrifice. That's a law of sacrifice. That's present, that sacrifice of lifestyle, sacrifice of your yourself, presenting your bodies, your mind, your thoughts, your movements, your will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 16, 24 through 25. If anyone would come after me, he must take up his cross and follow me. Taking up your cross means that you would consider yourself dead already. It means that, look, you can't kill a dead man. I'm going to do what God tells me to do regardless of how I feel. That's operating a life of sacrifice. That means I'm trusting what God said in his promises over how I, what I'm looking at, over what I'm facing, over the proclivities, over whatever adversities. Hallelujah. That's what that means. So there, there are many different ways that we can look at it in aspects of life. It, the Bible says again to go back to First Kings. She she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her 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 household ate for many days. Hallelujah! It said that she went and did what Elijah said. She went and sacrificed. She moved. She sacrificed. She obeyed. And because of that, her and her household, her and her son ate for many days when she thought she was going to, that's all that she had. When she thought that that was her last meal. She moved, she moved out of the place of where she was. She wagered all of the promises of God. And because of that, she became a believer. Elijah was refined. This woman of God ate, her and her son lived. Because of the law of sacrifice was activated. It was active and moving. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that y'all was blessed. That is my time. I thank you all for yours. I pray that this has blessed you in many, many ways. And understanding um, how important the law of sacrifice is. I pray that you all have received this. That you will go back and do your due diligence of study the word of God to get a deeper understanding of whatever I did not convey to you that the Lord is speaking to your heart. Remember the cherith, that was a place of cut away, of a place um, of, of, of cutting and contouring in the place of Zarephath, that a place of purification, hallelujah, sanctification, refining that the Lord with, whether you're in cherith, whether you're in Zarephath. That you, the, that you operate in the law of sacrifice, that you obey the Lord and let him do the mighty work and trust in him. Don't challenge or question the integrity of God. Hallelujah. So we just thank God in all that he's doing and everything that he is about to do. I'm going to ask uh, Prophetess Bethany, if you would pray us out on tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you. Uh, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord God, for all that has been spoken. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us the clarity and the understanding of what it is and what it means um, to sacrifice according to your kingdom, according to the laws, according to your institutes, according to your commands. And that, and everything. that, Lord God, not only do we, will we sacrifice, Lord God, but that we will also obey because that goes together hand in hand. For yes, your word declares that obedience is better than sacrifice. But Lord God, in order for us to receive certain access, in order for us to receive provision, in order for us to receive um, gaining in whatever it is that we need, that Father God, that an exchange has to take place. And in that exchange, meaning that there is a cost that will take place in the sacrifice that Lord God, that we will bring things unto you, Lord God, that is requiring of us, Father, and that we are acting in a place of obedience pertaining to that. So Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us, Lord God, 
the word. We thank you, Lord God, for the instructions. We thank you, Lord God, that we will even trust you in this, Lord God, uh, as we are sacrificing uh, those things unto you, Lord God, and believing in you and trusting in you and knowing, Lord God, that whatever it is that we need, that as long as we obey, as long as we understand what the sacrifice is and what it means, that Father God, that everything will fall into place, that everything will be in alignment just as it was with the woman that was able to receive the provision uh, from, from being obedient to the prophet Elijah. So Father God, let that be so for us as well, that everything, oh God, that we have, that everything that is needed is because of our obedience, is because of the sacrifice that we brought unto you, and that Lord God, that you will allow the little to be expanded and to be much to be expanded and to be great, that Lord God, that what we have, Father, that it will not exhaust, that it will not run out, but Lord God, that you will give us more than enough because of our obedience, that you will give us more than enough because we understand what it means to sacrifice, that we understand the law and that we will follow it from this day forward, Lord God, so that we will be able to gain access, so that we will be able to experience those open doors and have those encounters with you because Lord God, we are willing to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service, Lord God. And that as we are sacrificing, Father, as we are being obedient, Lord God, that we too will listen to the instructions, that we too will have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, Lord God, that even if it's our last dime, Father, that we will sacrifice it, Lord God, if you tell us to, that just as Apostle gave the example, she only had six dollars, but you told her to give you told her to give five to the man. And yet because of the sacrifice, knowing that she needed gas in her car, that Lord God, that you gave her the provision that she needed. And not only did you give her what she needed, but that you also gave the man what it is that he needed in that time and in that moment of his life. So Lord God, let us have the clarity and even deeper understanding of what it means to sacrifice and that there is an exchange that is taking place and that we dare not be selfish and that we dare not doubt you, but Lord God, in the instruction that we trust you, in the instruction that we know, Father, that you, O oh God, will be the one that will provide for us in that very moment. So Lord God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father, for the clear instructions. We thank you, Lord, that obedience is your love language, but that there are also things that we will have to sacrifice, that there are also things that we will have to let go of, that there are also things that we would not be able to remain in a place of complacency, but Lord God, that there will be things that we will have to sacrifice and give unto you in order for the exchange and the transition and the transformation to take place. So Father God, we thank you again for this right now word and everything that comes with it and that we will follow it and that we will follow you, that we will follow every law, that we will follow every command, that we will follow every statute and that we dare not question it, Lord God, that we dare not question your word, that we dare not question your instruction, but Father God, that we obey, Father God, and that we obey the kingdom laws of your word. So Father God, we thank you for this word and everything that has been spoken, everything that has been prophesied, everything that has been said, Lord God, that is covered and sealed with the blood of Jesus. And that even those that will come and listen to the to the replay, that they too will be blessed and that they will have understanding and clarity and insight on what the law of sacrifice is. And so Father, we thank you on tonight. We glorify you and we give you all the honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Thank you all for joining tonight um, in Bible study, um, impartation, Bible study on tonight as we are um, closing out on the law of sacrifice. We will pick up still in the law uh, or the law and order series. The next law is the law of worship. Amen. Glory to God. We'll pick up with the law of worship. So I'm excited about about that law to teach that amen so this if you're led to sow if this word has blessed you you want to sow into the ministry um or you want to sow a seed a sacrificial seed amen um you can do so by uh sowing into zale um at 832 or you can also so be a cash app at dollar sign trailblazing ministry that's zale 832 961 
or that is cash at trailblazing ministry um you can so on that side hey listen if you have a second if you have not already going on to youtube and subscribe to our youtube channel where we download a lot of the teachings there um you can go to find us at trailblazing international ministries and under youtube and then also um go to the website and check it out become a partner if you're led to do so amen so until next time we love you and remember to mind your disposition because you may be the only bible that someone will ever read until next week the lord say the same We'll be right here at the same time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. But meet us back on a prayer line Tuesday morning at 5.30 a.m. Power of Agreement prayer line. We are praying. We are interceding. We are standing on the wall as watchmen and intercessors for the Lord. Amen. Tuesdays and Thursday morning at 5.30 a.m. Call in and pray with us. Intercede with us. Lock on with us. Let's be in agreement as we pray the word of the Lord. And then again, uh, Saturday at 5 30 um, we have service our evening worship service meet us at 434 what um highway six south in houston texas where we are in the building in the church amen but we're here on zoom and facebook live for bible study every thursday at 7 p.m central standard time listen my disposition you may be the only Bible that someone will ever read. We love you. God loves you most. Have an amazing night. Remember, the law of sacrifice is the seed of transition and change. Have an amazing night. God bless. Night, everybody.